Welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, where we bring you conversations with the top business minds on Long Island and around the nation every week. Featuring expert consultants and small business owners who have found success but are also willing to share their top tips, failures, and give gritty, matter-of-fact advice based on their firsthand experience. Now, let's Let's get get down down to business business on Tower Tower Talk Talk Business Business Radio Radio, on on the the voice of Nassau Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hello, and welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Ray Schwetz, AVP of Business Banking at Jovia Financial Credit Union, along with Tanisha Boston Hill, CEO Keeper of the brand Marketing and Digital Agency, as well as Michael Chung. We're focused on bringing you weekly business advice, tips, tools, and services that help you grow your business. Plus, we're interviewing the top business leaders in the industry. Helping provide you with business empowerment today is Scott Britton, Executive Editor at Herald Community Papers, along with Eric File, Director of Business Development at Brickner Communications. Thank you, guys. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Why don't we start with, uh, just give us a little bit about yourselves, a little bit about your background. Uh, Scott, why don't you tell us about how you became the Executive Editor? Sure. Uh, well, I'm happy to. I am, I've been the executive editor now for five years. Uh, this is my fifth year. Uh, I've been with Herald Community Newspapers, which is a division of Richner Communications, for 28 years. I started as a reporter uh, back in my mid-20s after having returned from the Peace Corps. Uh, worked through, through the ranks, uh, became ed- you know assistant editor, features editor, editor, senior editor, senior editor for uh, for. Uh, staff development and enterprise reporting, and then finally executive editor. So uh, it's been a, been a long 28 years, but it's been a great 28 years. Uh, I've also um, freelanced for the New York Times as a photographer and as a, um, a writer for Newsday, and I'm an adjunct professor at Hofstra University. It's amazing hearing Scott's story that he has time, right, to, to do all the work. That he does. <laughs> He's such a busy guy. It's funny. So in comparison to Scott's long time, I have been with Richner for five months. I joined in January of this year, and it was a long, circuitous trip that started. uh, I'm a Long Islander native here to our island. And then right after college, it was funny. I was speaking to someone in the past week, two people who use the term, I'm a recovering lawyer. And I was telling the story to them, both of them, that I was studying for the LSATs. I was the English major and then got a job to be a copy editor with a magazine that was a competitor of TV Guide back in the early 1990s. And I threw my LSAT book under the bed, and I never found it till after my father moved to Florida about 10 years ago. So um, that was the end of my law career there, so I never even got to recover. But starting as a copy editor at a company called TVSM, it was a competitor of TV Guide, and the timing was really great and lucky for me there, you know, coming up into the mid 90s as the internet launched, we got to launch the first ever TV listings based website. It was totaltv.com, which, if you look, doesn't exist anymore. And it was this funny notion of, wow, well, people might go to this internet thing to see something about TV listings, which were very, very print driven. TV Guy bought our company. I was there and became executive editor and launched tvguide.com with a team there and really got into content marketing, which before it was called content marketing, working with brands, whether it was Shark Week for Discovery Channel or NASCAR or HBO. And then from there, I got to be on-air talent at ESPN for a while. They had a morning show called Cold Pizza. And once again, all of it was a sort of bringing different platforms, video, print, digital, all together, went to work for Hachette and then Meredith Corporation, their integrated marketing company. Then for the last 10 years, I stayed put on the island. I was out east in the Hamptons at a company, Dance Papers, where we launched live events and digital. And then talking with Stuart Richner, the owner, at the turn of the year of Richner and saying, you know, what they're doing. I've known Stuart for a long time and always admired the work they did. And they were talking about all this growth and potential and coming out of the pandemic with all these new brands. And I said, if you'll have me, I'm in. And, uh, and here I am. That's fantastic. And it's so, it's so interesting because um, for both of you, uh, being in media and being a child of media myself, um, you you walk in the door as, you know, budding and, and energizing and, uh, and then you look up and it's 5, 10, 15, 20 years later and you look back and go, wow, where did the time go? Um, so interesting stories and interesting paths. So very happy to have you here and um, specifically in your current roles as you're helping small businesses and really helping us energize uh, the, the world as we redeem ourselves from this pandemic. 
Uh, tell us a little bit about a, a day in the life and, and what you do. So every day is different. I mean, that's what I love about this profession, journalism, and this job. Uh, one day you may be covering a breaking news story. Uh, I mean, in my current role, basically, I lead teams when we're covering breaking news stories. So anything that big might happen, I'm always leading on that, uh, or at least most of the time. We have three senior editors who also lead on those, but most of the time I'm doing that. Uh, there's a lot of editing involved. Uh, three days out of the week, I'm, I'm heavily involved in editing. So I'm editing usually on average probably about somewhere between 20 and 30 uh, front page stories. Um, I also write a lot. Uh, I write a lot of stories. I write a lot of columns. Uh, I wrote for the past year, I've written most of our editorials, um, in, if not all of them. Uh, generally speaking, that's not the case in the past, but during the pandemic I have. Um, things have changed a bit during the pandemic because we've been on a kind of crazy schedules that are, don't really mimic what we've done in the past. Um, but, um, you know, uh, so I, I would say every day is different. Um, personally, I, the p- part I love about the job is interacting with people out in the field and being out in the field. I don't like sitting in the office myself, although my job as executive editor requires it. Um, but, you know, for me, the best part is being out in the field with people. Yeah, I was going to say that must must have been tough, I guess, with the pandemic for you not to be out at events and, and covering things. But I guess uh, you also have a lot of office time just based on the job responsibilities. Yeah, well, I mean, I jumped out. I jumped out and actually, you know, covered a lot of events last year. Uh, and I was out in the field a lot. Um, our reporters, we were essential workers, so we were allowed out into the field. Uh, we didn't we didn't go out anywhere near as, as much as we did. Uh, meetings were no longer live. There were no longer a lot of events. But for example, last June, you know, I covered the Black Lives Matter protests that, you know, kind of came out across uh, uh, Nassau County um, and spent about two weeks just straight covering those every day. Um, you know, so there was, there was a lot to cover out in the field, even though it was the pandemic. Um, but there was a lot. That's good to hear. Now, how about you, Eric? How about you? What's a day in the life like for you? You know, it's funny. It's similar to what Scott said. No day is the same, yet there are a lot of consistent aspects to each day. So in the division that I'm heading up, it is about launching new brands and particularly content-driven brands. So looking out and saying, okay, what areas of interest would we be able to build a multi-platform brand around? You know, and a, a little bit later, I'll open up some secrets about uh, the first one we're doing, or I can just do it now. It's called Long Island Home and looking at the real estate market and home improvement and all those things that happened so heavily over the past year, like we've never seen before. How do we launch that as a brand? So I'll wake up in the morning and we just launched our Instagram platform. So I'll go out at seven o'clock for an hour and just drive through different neighborhoods on Long Island and look for interesting photos or projects that are being done. And then maybe do a sales meeting and train the sales team on this new brand, help them with understanding the different digital platforms. How do you sell that? And then consulting with potential clients and partners and helping them you really listen to what they need and how we can help them and then sort of try and figure out how do we bring everybody together with the reach and the trust that we have as the community newspaper from Scott and his team and then the way that we can help small businesses. So every day is talking to somebody new, making connections and coming up with new ideas. It's very exciting. That's definitely exciting. And, you know, especially during, you know, uh, these unprecedented times and as we're coming off these restrictions from the pandemic, uh, have you noticed any changes in the market for you or uh, has it been flooding with requests? Uh, What is your uh, opinion on that? I mean, I think from a client advertising perspective, Mm -hmm. through the past year, a lot of businesses were trying to hit that balance of how much do we spend to keep our businesses vibrant, to tell the new things we're doing during these unprecedented times that we're changing every day, and how much do we squirrel away for a rainy day? And now that it looks like there is some real sunshine happening, we're making very good strides, opening up, yeah, we found that businesses are starting to spend a little bit more. They are starting to look at different platforms. They have, over the past year, embraced more digital, for example, but they've also seen the power that a local community newspaper brings. I mean, that was really what was so important that we saw that over the last year, the news that was so local and how that reached the audience then helped the business sector reach that audience. I think that they've come with a new appreciation as they come and have conversations with us. Yeah, I mean, from an editorial perspective, I would say that we 
heavily covered the business community because that was it was so challenged throughout the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, So every week, certainly through the early parts of the pandemic, we were focused, you know, in a big way on local businesses, small businesses, mom and pop shops, um, you know, the the, the kinds of shops that don't necessarily have big bank accounts uh, that they can turn to in, in, a, in an emergency type situation. Some of them may be work, you know, surviving week to week. Um, so we wanted to provide as much coverage for these kinds of businesses as possible uh, throughout the pandemic to, to just kind of give them a lift and give them notice and to make sure that folks out there knew that they existed and that they were still in business. I mean, that was a big concern for a lot of small businesses that didn't have the ability to advertise necessarily. Um, You know, so from an editorial perspective, you know, that was a big focus of ours. And of course, you know, other businesses as well, but, you know, the main street mom and pop shops were definitely a big focus of our coverage. I totally agree, you know, with the, you know, with the community being so appreciative of what you guys do. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's sort of everyone's duty to help each other out right now to redeem ourselves as a country or, you know, even just as a, uh, as, you know, the entire world, you know, I just feel every country is doing the same. And, you know, I'm, uh, it's very inspiring to hear. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Michael Chung, along with Don- Denisha Hill and Ray Schwetz. And our guests today are Scott, Scott Brinton, Executive Editor at Herald Community Papers, along with Eric File, Director of Business Development at Richner Communications. Now say as a business over being on the receiving end of some of your emails regarding some of the packages you put together, um, they were very um, uplifting. Uh, they gave us hope. And although I wasn't able to take part, uh, participate in some of the advertising program, I felt like you were connected and you got it. That if it was a different time, if there were PPP came through a little earlier, I would have been able to say, let me go in and let me partner with, you know, Long Island Herald because they're going to take care of me. They recognize my pain points and they're there for me because, Obviously, if you're reaching out, then you know that there's a need. And I, 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 I really want to just say your team did an awesome job with that. And the follow through was fantastic. So kudos to your entire, you know, ad sales team, but also just looking at it from more of a humanistic standpoint. And I thought that was really, really key. Well, that's great. And, you know, thank you on behalf of, of everybody here. And I think really that goes to the power of community and having, whether it's a sales team member, a writer, an editor, everybody being part of this Long Island community where we do understand one another's pain and really want to help one another out and be able to say, hey, listen, this is our business, but we're reaching out to you as people who want to help people. and Let's do this together and move forward together. That's exactly it. So we're very glad that message came across. Yeah, it really resonated. Um, and we tried to, you know, spread the word. So um, I personally reached out to, you know, other business owners to say, hey, look what the Long Island Herald is doing. They they recognize um, that you're in need. So, again, just spectacular program on your, on your team's behalf. Um, but if you can share with us just some of, you know, from your perspective, Scott and or Eric, you know, what what is the passion? What is your what's driving force? for Long Island Herald and how are you staying connected as we move from, you know, being, you know, pot in the pandemic and things are opening up? Yeah. I mean, what we like to talk about at the Herald is that, you know, who are we? Are we journalists? Uh, yes, we're journalists, but more importantly, we're storytellers. We're here to tell people's stories. Um, so that's really our passion and our mission. Um, and I think that's why, you know, connecting with people on the street, connecting with people in their homes, and then telling their stories. And I think that was a big part of what we tried to do throughout the pandemic was tell people stories. Um, That wasn't necessarily always easy to do, given the restrictions. And, you know, folks don't necessarily want to welcome us into their homes the way they did prior to the pandemic. But uh, we were able to get out and about, as I mentioned before, uh, into local communities where, that we cover and, you know, find people and tell their stories. Um, I think it's in part cathartic for them to be able to tell their stories, but also to get their issues out. Because anytime, you know, they people express their troubles, mm-hmm. their problems, it's read by, we know it's read by the local elected leaders 
whether it's, you know, the Nassau County Executive's Office or, you know, a state senator, even a U.S. senator, um, they, they see their, the message getting out, they are heard, and oftentimes action follows. So that's really what we're all about. Absolutely. And now, um, just for personal knowledge, some of your journalists would attend, um, you know, live events, live meetings in the community throughout the years. So how was that transition? Was it just Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting? Mm. And what type of focus or participation did you you guys have? Well, we cover all the, we cover the meetings by uh, Zoom. Uh, when, you know, during, during the height of the pandemic. So, you know, village meetings, um, county meetings, uh, school board meetings, those still carried on because uh, the gov- you know, the, obviously the business of the government still needs to carry on. So we continued covering those throughout the pandemic by Zoom. Um, lately, they've been starting to open up and allowing folks in on a very limited basis. Uh, and some you know, now that the uh, many of the restrictions are lifted, I think that's going to change. It's going to open up a lot more. So I think by September, we'll be back live. Um, but uh, where appropriate, we are covering events and, you know, uh, meetings live. Uh, now, certainly outdoor events, there have been a lot of outdoor events that we've been able to cover live. And, you know, our reporters have been on the ground. And as I mentioned before, you know, I, even I've been on the ground as much as I possibly can be in my role. Um but you know we'll we're hoping to get back full and be fully live uh, by by September. Uh, obviously, that depends on what happens with the pandemic and and how it turns. If it turns, if it if it continues to to you know if the infection rate continues to drop um, the way it has, um, then I think we'll all be live by by September. That's fantastic. And so, for business owners that are listening, what are some of your key performance indicators, Eric, and the reason why they should select? the Long Island Herald to partner with? I think first and foremost is our relationship with the audience. And our audience goes beyond just mere readers. It is everybody who we interact with on every platform. So it's the people who are getting the paper. It's trusted news. It's a trusted source. So by having, yes, great reach, incredible subscription numbers on liherald.com, you know, the visitors, they're through the roof. We get a lot of page views there. Those are all very important. But what's more important is really the engagement of the content that we put around where the advertisers are. So they're going to read a lot of the stories. They're going to read the editorials that Scott writes because they know that they're important to the community. And by association, anybody advertising with that is important to the community. That, that connection cannot be understated. And that's across the country. We just happen to have a great community relationship here ourselves on Long Island. You know, some of the other things really are, you know, email marketing. Email marketing has actually grown. I feel like we all think, oh my goodness, we've been doing it forever. It's a relatively new phenomenon. And, you know, the tens of thousands of people we reach, yes, we can have great open rates there. But then are they getting an actual interaction then from that email into the business? And now more and more as we're seeing people go into more stores, there will be that greater connection before as well. Okay, hey, here's an email. You can do something virtually. And that was a tough connection for people to make over the last year. But now more and more doing that. Webinars was another great, great platform that Richner launched through the pandemic. And now, you know, using Zoom technology, that was a way that you could not, as an advertiser, reach an audience of a couple hundred people in a room on a Wednesday night at six o'clock. Where are you going to get that? But now it became such a part of our culture and something that we will continue to do even as the world opens up and we bring back live events as well. And again, live events, well, that will really be the icing on the cake of as far as what we can offer at Richner, really bringing people together, advertisers, partners, and audience. And that's really key for you know everyone out there that's listening, knowing that they can actually have someone on the media side that's not really just selling them to close and make budget, but also that really cares about their business, right? Because that otherwise, you know, they can just go anywhere. But to know that your team is there and trusted is really key. So thank you, guys. You're listening to Tower Talk Business Radio. Our guest today is Scott Brenton, Executive Director at Harold Community Papers, along with Eric Field, Director of Business Development at Richner Communications. My name is Denisha Boston-Hill, along with Ray Schwetz and Michael Trung on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. <laughs> Now, I have to ask you a couple of questions because um, I have a daughter who's college age and she loves the media and is looking to break in. So what advice would a, 
would each of you have for someone who's looking to get into doing the kind of work that you both do? She's interested in journalism? Yes, and, and journalism and media. Um, but yeah, I think the, the focus there is really the journalism side. She's excited by you know, pretty much what you guys are talking about, that you're boots on the ground, you're getting involved, you're in the middle of events. You know, she really seems to love that. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of students, you know, her age or, that might be listening that would, would love to hear what you'd have to say. So, you know, a couple of things. One, I think it's fantastic that she wants to be a journalist because we need journalists. We need the next generation of journalists to come up and, and to to step up um, because it's really a foundation of our society. I mean, there's there's a reason why the the founders wrote press freedom into the First Amendment um, because it's really a bedrock of our society. So without journalists, we don't have a society as far as I'm concerned. So kudos to your daughter and kudos to obviously those who, the young people who are stepping up. Um, You know, in terms of how to break into the field, one, I would say join a professional association. I am with the Society of Professional Journalists. I'm actually president, I'm outgoing president of the Press Club of Long Island, which is a chapter of the Society of Professional Journalists. Um, And I think that's where you get to meet people and learn about the profession uh, on, a, on a more casual level. Um, you make connections. I mean, you're all business people. Uh, well, journalists aren't really any different than journal, you know, uh, business people. You know, you, you make connections and that's how you find jobs. Um, so you do that through, you know, uh, professional organizations like the Society of Professional Journalists. Um, uh, two, I would say practice as much as you can. You know, if you see a protest outside your door, Go out and just cover it just for the sake of covering it, um, whether whether or not you have a publication to, to publish it, uh, because these days you can always be your own self-publishing person. You know, you can do your own self-publishing, create a WordPress site and you're a publisher. Um, but the key is to practice um, and to get feedback from mentors at places like the Society of Professional Journalists. Um, the other thing I would say is major in journalism in college. I think it's a very important thing. Uh, you learn the basics. Uh, there's a lot of debate whether or not you should you know, major in journalism. I would say major in journalism and minor in something else, um, something else that you might be particularly interested in. But that journalism major really kind of gives you that foundation uh, that will be a springboard for your career. It's much easier. You're going to step into a career, you know, within a year or two or three, you might be an assistant editor, uh, whereas it might take you much longer without a journalism major. So those, those are my basic, uh, you know, points of advice. Um, and, um, you know, just, and the last piece of advice, read everything you can get, read every you know, article that you can find and, and ask yourself questions. How did this journalist do this article? Um, and before you know it, you'll be doing it yourself. And I will definitely, you know, echo the congratulations, the thanks to have a young generation that wants to become journalists and continue, you know, the importance of covering news and getting facts and the truth out there could not be more important. So I think she has an exciting career ahead of her. You know, it's funny, you know, Scott said, oh, <clears throat> the intro, the sort of differentiation between journalists and business people as far as networking. So I started out actually, as I may have said, on the journalist side, on the editorial side. And it gave me a really good springboard eventually to come over to the business side. My first editor had worked for Malcolm Forbes and was very aware of teaching the young writers and editors there about the business side of what we were doing. So we understood both sides. And plenty of people I worked with went the business way and some went the journalist way, and then some sort of came down the content business side, which is where I sort of straddle there. But I think it would be important for her to, A, make sure she learns and understands all sides of the business wherever she does decide to work, to understand how the ad sales side works, even if she never needs to talk with them, do anything with them, to sort of get an appreciation and to try new things, to be able to take a story, take an assignment that may not be in her wheelhouse that she loves. It might not be her dream assignment, but that is the sort of earning your stripes, getting in there, learning how to do it, eventually covering completely your passion. And you will be a Scott one day and that that will come over time. And again, even at that point, there will be things that may not be your passion 100% that you have to cover, but to be willing to try things be willing to dive in, to take on extra assignments, and really the, uh, go above and beyond. It sounds like a cliche, but I think in every side, but particularly journalism and for young writers and editors, that is something that will make them stand out. Certainly, you know, perseverance and the discipline 
to uh, follow, uh, you know, one's passion is definitely important, possibly even the most important thing in anything that we do. Um, so Scott and Eric, you know, if this was kind of like a TED talk, right? I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of listeners out right now, you know, a mixture of everyone, you know, there are students, there are young entrepreneurs, and even just people who are, who are veterans in the business. If this was, you know, the TED talk, and, you know, I, obviously, there are so many things that you would want to teach, and that is so important, or, or, or can't just be one component. But if you had to choose, what would be one thing that you would want the listeners to take away from all of this? What is like the most important thing that you want them to learn based off from your profession? Mm. We'll start with uh, Eric. So the one thing I would say is you're going to fail and that's okay. You have to accept the fact that you're going to take risks, calculated risks. Don't be crazy and just dive into things without any due diligence. Do your due diligence, but be bold enough to take risks with the understanding that you're going to fail. But from that failure, don't call it a failure. A very good friend of mine just calls it a challenge. And it's a challenge you will overcome and learn from and grow. So whether that is starting a new business, coming up with a new product that may not work, attempting to write a story in a different way with a different voice that just sort of flopped, that is okay. Just be bold and go forward and truly just believe that your experience and what you learned from the last time will help you going forward. And that's across any walk of life. I mean, I would, this is exciting because I always wanted to do a TED Talk. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, the one thing I would say is this, is journalism is ultimately about people. Uh, it's about the people we cover. Um, and I, for me, that's the most important thing. I mentioned earlier that I'm a storyteller. Um, we, we work with a lot of young journalists. Uh, we're as a community newspaper. Um, we get a lot of young journalists coming in. We have, we have journalists of all ages, but many young people start their careers at Herald Community Newspapers. Um, and the, the one piece of advice that we're constantly harping on is that journalism is about people um, and the people we cover and their issues and their concerns. Um, and so long as it's about them, then all's good. Thank you so much. It's great. Great information. And uh, we really want to thank you for being with us today. Uh, just so that our listeners can know, where can we find you on the web? Well, we, our website for Herald Community Newspapers is uh, liherald.com. I also have a personal website, scottbrinton1.com, so you can find me there. Uh, you can also find me at hofstra.edu, so a couple different places. I'm on Twitter, of course. Scott Brinton one is my handle. You can look me up on you know either either Twitter or Instagram, either place. So I will just keep it simple. And anybody, you can just email me, E-F-E-I-L at liherald.com. That is the most direct way. I'm looking at it 25 hours a day. So it's the best way to get me. Sounds good. Thanks very much. And again, thank you for being with us. And now we have DB's philosophy. Absolutely. The only security of all is in freedom of the press, is in free press. Thomas Jefferson. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. We really appreciated the talk today. Thank you so much. Thank you. My name is Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston Hill and Michael Chung, your co host and producers. This is an NCC Foundation Business Leaders Council production. Visit ncc.edu slash WHBC for more information. We're available on iHeartRadio as a podcast, iTunes, Android Podcast, and Spreaker. This has been Tower Talk Business Radio on the voice of NASA Community College 90.3 WHBC.